we've mentored different groups of young people. So even with planting trees, it's an avenue. Uh, we, we, w when we look at the people in needy areas, there's so much that people can do, mm -hmm. even as Christians. So even green wasn't just like, just born, but there's, there's a duty of care mm -hmm. to the environment, mm -hmm. to the people, to the community. We, has, we still have programs of mentorship that mm -hmm. we are doing. Mm -hmm. We still have uh, people that need a computer. I'm telling you like the needs that you realize when you're on the ground. You know, when we are here serious on the corporate perspective, you we have, have to know so much yeah, we have down our there. ties and everything. Mm -hmm. But go to the ground and you realize some things you take for granted are so important to someone. So these are the angles that we are looking at. And, and it brings me to like the green work that we are doing and the green initiatives. We decided to form a consultancy uh, called Global, Global Africa Consulting, mm -hmm. so that it can cater for the angles, reach to the corporates, okay. uh, target a corporate, tell them, I know s setting up a CSR arm is very, very expensive, but we can consult, we can help you reach an angle uh, of a community somewhere. Mm -hmm. We can help you reach Mao, we can help you reach Karura Forest, we'll monitor your project, we'll, monitor, we'll document it, or we can reach out to this community in Gedogoro slums mm -hmm. who need just a desktop. A desktop is maybe at most 30,000. Mm -hmm. And we can go there for a weekly session and we mentor them and we help them and we teach them on computers. So you don't even have to have three masters or PhDs. So how, have, they, have they received this? How have they come out to support? They have. Last week we had one of the corporates uh, do an activity in Karura Forest. They did a treasure hunt and they also did tree planting. Mm -hmm. And we were there sensitizing them and telling them, you know, why you need to take care of the environment, why you need to come here, plant trees, take an active responsibility, recycle. You know, people, you see people throwing things off the car, you throw trash off the road. You wonder, as in, where did that, that, angle of people just changing their mentality and being so ignorant yeah. that there's no global warming. We are in Africa, yes, but global warming is real. It's happening. So people need to know. People need to be aware. And unless like people like you, the media, can help us reach out there. Mm -hmm. But people ask this, I honestly feel like there's something missing, either in, a, in our education sector or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we have to get to the people and tell them what you're doing is wrong. The rivers are really dry. They are. It's a fact. Mao people don't see as people yeah. need them as that now. They don't. You're in the city, you're comfortable, you have your life. Life is matter Like you yeah. think my life doesn't affect you. Like the guy in the forest or the person or the forest doesn't affect you. When the water dries up there, it will dry up in your tap. Yeah. So in one way or another, you are affected. Yeah. What, uh, 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 what was inspiration in doing all this? My inspiration came from just the realization that God had a higher calling on me. Just not to be the typical average guy, be born, go to school, mm -hmm. go to uni, get a job, get, get, a job, get, married. get married, have kids, yes. raise them, grow old. Have an anniversary. Yeah, I'm an anniversary. <laughs> Uh, what else do people do? Uh, buy a car, buy a house, buy a ranch. Yes. yes. Um, then go back to him. Go holiday and then die. I, I didn't think I want to be immortal when I die. And my immortalness is that others will live in me if it is my, through me, as in, in terms of like my kids will take after me. They'll plant trees, they'll do community work, they'll volunteer with the UN or whatever, or with cops, Red Cross, whatever. See the world. Lovely. Yeah. Let's take a break. Thank we are coming back to <laughs> dig more deep into all this. Wow, today we are spending time with this great man, Michael Oyaki, and we are taking a short break. You want to take water, Kidogo, and the question that I want to leave you with is what you do will make people live in you after you've gone. Don't go away. Welcome back to People Talk Show today, spending some great time with Michael Wayaki Angman, who's decided to go green. All he wants to see is the environment being conserved for us, 
and for future generations. So, uh, we were talking about your inspiration, what inspired you into doing all this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you said it was school, right? Yes. So, um, what, 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 what insights have you, real, have you learned? Because it's like there's no human, uh, maybe as in, it's not, it doesn't start with human. You didn't, somebody did not come and challenge you, like, you can do this, you can do this, and then you started yeah. doing it. Yeah. What are some of the challenges or the, the new revelations that you've got along the way? as you are doing all this because I guess you had so many things to learn. Yeah. Just bluntly like that. Yeah. yeah. I think like the greatest lesson that I learned was you don't have to like always sit back and think that things will happen. Uh, the greatest challenge is when we are doing an activity and we, we lack sponsorship or we lack <coughs> support. But that one desire that I'm going to do this I'm going to do this, with or without. If we end up planting 10 trees, it's still fine. Mm -hmm. It's still better than nothing. Along the way, I've discovered that some people want to do it for, to be known, mm -hmm. to be seen. Mm -hmm. But all that doesn't, doesn't really bring back anything. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like you just have to have a heart that's willing and to do the little that you can because maybe that's all that you can be able to do. Mm -hmm. There are people out there who can fund a whole forest and it's planted, but they don't do it because something else is, maybe they're doing something else or their priority is something else, yes. or they don't have that passion for the environment. They'd rather do something else. So we are all different, but we must all awaken and realize that we owe a duty of care to our environment or where we stay and, you know, even as you raise a child in whatever environment that you're in, they grow up that way, knowing that things are done like this. You know, uh, it say that teach a kid to your, in a particular way. Go. Yeah, and you'll never depart up, but, yeah. from those ways. Mm -hmm. So the greatest lesson is that just never sit back and think that things will be done. If you realize that there's a need, there are out there very many other people who are doing what I'm doing, even maybe they are better. But we are all doing it for one thing, for the good of our environment. And I acknowledge like the work that Wangari Madai did, uh, Dr. Kalua is doing with uh, Green Africa. There are various people who must rise up in a particular generation. Yes, as you've said, there are many people who do the same thing outside mm. there with what you're doing. Yes. And what sets you apart? What makes you different? Uh, as much as you're doing the same thing, mm -hmm. according to you? Well, I think my target, like, like the way I target the youth, um, the way I've seen that if we nurture the young uh, from an early age, you remember the time of Moy, he used to say, cut one tree, plant two. Yes. I believe that's a policy that should be brought <laughs> back. Uh, honestly, as in, I feel like we were discussing with a friend of mine who was working on uh, a recently uh, concluded conference, Rio Plus 20. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to come up with a, a, a curriculum for the children on environment stuff. You know, like they take an active role from an early age. These are the things that I see that would bring an end to our irresponsibility and mm -hmm. sort of awaken us from our whole ignorant kind of life that we're living, mm -hmm. to recycling. I went to Switzerland and it was so clean. I must say it was very clean. Mm -hmm. And when I come back here and I realize, you know, we can get to where we want if we desire to. But it is a personal choice to desire peace, to desire a good environment, to desire that your, your streets will be safe. It must come from a conscious decision as a people and as a community that this is what we want to do. So many a times people will do things, but they will do them for the wrong reasons. So they will never go. I believe God looks at someone's heart. And I, I know why I have gone that far where I've reached is because I have willed to do that what he wants me to do. And not for my personal gain or for my name, but for the fatherlands of his kingdom, and f just for me to fulfill mm -hmm. my stewardship role. And if I can just mentor two 
or three, you shall have done your part. I shall have done my part. In the past government, at least, we used to have uh, Professor Ongari Madai. Yes. At least uh, she was in the government and she could do some of the things mm -hmm. uh, concerning the environment. Yes. And truth be told, right now, we have very few, even in terms as in the high and mighty, the politicians, mm -hmm. who even think about environment. Yes. Actually, they're the first ones to go putting their posters everywhere and they don't remember to go and remove them. Yes. Yeah. That's so, true. Uh, what, what are we seeing uh, in the next, f in, the, in, the, in the new, this new government, developed government? Are we seeing any hope or still yeah. people have to grow from down? Well, luckily there is a lot of NGOs that are in that line, mm -hmm. a lot of CBOs that have been set up. But there needs to be an arm, a serious arm. And I, th I think just re recently they established a national water towers, I think, uh, kind of parastato that, that will be handling that. And what I seek to, that will be done is that government will push for the establishment and the security and protection of forest, our reserves, and even the national, because now we are seeing even the, the rhinos and the elephants are being endangered and all yes. that. But yes. if we look at, the government has a really big say with the new dispensation and the counties and everything, yes. the governors need to have an arm on environment that they are going to handle certain, certain areas, you know, the protection of the forest, mm -hmm. uh, the water towers, the catchment areas, our national you know, reserves, you know, like Mount Kenya has always been endangered, the, the Abadeas and small, small things. But right now, guys, we are so much into, into Vision 2030 yeah. and industrialization that we are forgetting these things. It, it's, it's a fact. <laughs> it's a fact. We are forgetting that, honestly, we still have our environment even to think about. Yeah. yeah. So still, I guess, maybe so much work has to be done. There's so much work that has to be done. And the angle that, that is being brought and it has come up in the circles of discussion and green energy and everything, mm. it's sustainability. Right. With all this development that we, we are doing, mm. how are we going to sustain it? How are we going to sustain the demand for wood, timber, all this, or paper? How are we going to sustain it? Yes. How are we going to sustain the growth of so many industries in so many areas? Are we really planting as much as we should? So that we can use again. So that we can use yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. Are we building enough industries so that we can reduce the carbon dioxide in the, in, in the air? Are we planting enough trees in Nairobi, you know, Ngong Forest Sanctuary, or in Nairobi area for that matter, that the carbon that is getting out and the pollution is sunk, you know, it, it's purified by yes. that environment. Yes. So we are seeing more people getting into the Nairobi National Park, grabbing more land <laughs> inside. Mm. And it's a fact, you know? Mm. And the government is the only uh, institution that has the, such a big authority on this land, and they need to put policies and statutes on such areas for their protection. Like the case with Mao, it, it's really a delicate situation. The Ongiek have been there as a fact, but now, the forest is endangered. Now what do we do? Can they be empowered so that they plant trees and they take care of them and the government supports them? Or are, they going, are we going to have this scaffold of them being relocated somewhere else and now we are just saying protest, people, we can't, you can't bring people to our area, you can't relocate them here. And them also, they have put an injunction. This one doesn't make sense because they have been there for, for, the, for the rest of their lives. So yeah. why do you think of relocating them yeah. right now? now? It's more of it's empowering them exactly. than just relocating them. Mm -hmm. So what, what, are you, what are your future plans or maybe uh, near projects that you're planning to do? Well, right now we have tree planting with mm -hmm. uh, Karura Forest. Mm -hmm. uh, we are already advertising on uh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Facebook has been really yeah, good to us. Platform. Social media. <laughs> I, <laughs> has really done it for us yeah. uh, because advertising becomes really hard, uh -huh. but social media really does it well. And we are planting with, uh, District 10 is one of the cell groups in Lavington United Church. Okay. And they, we, while we were meeting, uh, we discussed and we said, you know, we need to do something for our environment as stewards. So we proposed that we have a tree planting and it was uh, agreed upon. And I said, okay, I will help. I will help with my expertise and what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we are going to have it on, the, on Saturday, 6th April. Uh, yeah, uh, just next month. Lovely. And we are encouraging people to come in their numbers, 
but also more importantly is to support it. You see, like a seedling as such as this, mm -hmm. it costs 300. Like 100. That, like that, that one like that? Yes, 100. Mm -hmm. This is, the species is croton. Mm -hmm. It's 100 for the seedling and 200 is for its upkeep for the next three years. Mm. Karura Forest will take care of them. Just imagine 300. And you're doing this to protect your environment. Just imagine 300, it's maybe fries and a soda <laughs> in the city. It's not much. Yeah, you can say, no, today I'm not eating, I'll, I'll buy a tree. As in it does a lot of, it, it, it has impact. I think sometimes that's, that's where we are, like, you know, if I give 300, it's too little. Or, so you want to have money, then you can do something. It's always that, do it now. So what are the avenues that guys can support you with if, if, if people wanted to? Yeah, people can give uh, through the MPESA number. Uh, I can give the MPESA number is 0721-597852. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And they can also come to Lovington United Church. And we have a desk there. And we register the names and the donations. By next week, we'll have committed to a particular number of trees that we're going to plant. Mm -hmm. We can't go on as in because there's prior arrangement there's a holes there's a trees and then now you know if someone is going to give seedlings mm -hmm. they need to know that there is upkeep of those seedlings yes. for the next three years yes so they need to support that with the upkeep yes Be because when you look at it those guys in karura forest they need to do that work that's their work and they need to be supported so we just can't leave them out there and that's the even as, as per Kenya forest, it's a policy that indeed, as you plant trees, you need to take care of them till they mature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, what what would you?